back to my class. As you know that I am the lecturer of Alibad Institute. In this class, we are dealing with the subject economics which is related to first year. In previous class, we have already discussed about the economics and we have seen and come to know that the criticism of the definitions and the definition of economy, meaning of economy, wealth definitions and on that definitions criticism is there then welfare of economy, scarcity of economy and superiority of Robbins definitions, growth of economy and fundamental problems of economy. And then after this all these points now we will continue our topic with nature and scope of economy. Here in this topic economics is an extensive and vast subject know the scope subject matter and the nature of the subject it is necessary to know the views expressed by economists belonging to classical and modern thinkers or the subject on the subject okay according to a social scientist that is Turgut and the Konsni, all economics activities start to satisfy the human wants we know well this is that and they believe that the primary principle of economic activities is attaining maximum satisfaction with less effort. This they call as economic motive. Okay, the objective of which is satisfying the human wants. Okay, after that they observed that in the society money plays a significant role in economic activities. Without money, there is no economic activity and economy is deal with the financial and money only. Thus, it is proposed that economic is a study of the part played by money in human affairs. Then there was no clarity whether economics is limited to trade activities or to money matters. But the nature of economics took to definite shape with the writing of Adam Smith. He was known as father of economics, made a beginning in defining economics and its scope with the publication of his famous book named as Wealth of Nations. Then the number of economics defined economics and its subject matter in different ways. Okay. The majority of economic thinkers from Adam Smith to Baigua has defined the subject matter as the study of the cases of material welfare or as the science of wealth. Here the Marshall confined it to the consumption, production, exchange and distribution of wealth. Okay, But according to Robbins and he find this economy is concerned with the special aspects of human behavior allocating scarce meaning among the competing ends. Okay, Then the scope of any science explained that the science is concerned with in economics and in traditional economic theory is divided into various branches like consumption, production, exchange, distribution, income, employment, planning and development. Whereas modern economic theory is divided into two branches that is microeconomic and macroeconomics. Okay, first we will go with the various branches of economics. Okay, now we will go with the various branches of economic that is consumption, production, exchange, distribution, income, employment planning and economic development. Consumption can be defined as extracting utility from the goods and services. Consumption is the act of using final goods and services to satisfy the current wants. Consumption is the basis for production, exchange and distribution. Okay. Now come to the production in economics. Production is the process of conservation of raw materials into final goods by adding form, place, 
time utility to the raw materials okay here john writes that production is any activity directed to the satisfaction of the other people's want through exchange okay here the factor which participate in production are called factors of production for example they are land labor capital and organization okay after that come to exchange branch in economy it is concerned with exchange of a good a good may be exchanged for another good or for money okay before the evolution of money when the barter system was in practice we know this very well okay but goods were exchanged for goods in barter system after there was many problems in barter system obviously the things which are exchanging the goods which are exchanging in place of goods that is not satisfying for the human wants so that they raises the problems okay then with the introduction of money value of every good is expressed in terms of money and can be exchanged for money and exchange is very easy we know this after the introduction of money only many problems have solved in the branch of exchange in economy okay after the exchange distribution branch is there in this branch of economy distribution is another important activity in economics it explains how good and services are distributed among the various factors of production which are responsible for the production okay each factor of production gets its reward obviously various theories are they to determine the factors prices okay next economic branches income individuals earn income by practicing in various economic activities the activities which are related to production of material goods or the services here income is continuous flow various concept of national income and the measuring methods of national income are discussed as a part of macroeconomics for analyzing the economic growth and as well as for the economic development also okay now come to the next point that is employment here employment include the study of the value of employment causes of unemployment and step for its removal obviously there we have to that is achieving full employment the level of employment is an economy which depends on the demands for consumption goods and demand for investment goods okay here full employment means employment of all those who are able and willing to work at the prevailing wages or rates okay after this the planning and the economic development here economic planning is essential for proper and efficient utilization of the available resources of course without planning there is no economic development and there is no welfare okay by the economic planning we mean to achieve the various targets systematically in a specific period of time so the economic planning is a method by which an optimum allocation of scarce resources among the various sectors is made in order to achieve the speedy development for the economy and for the improvement and for the welfare of people okay here the microeconomics studies the economics action and behavior of individual unit of individuals and small groups here after the various branches of economy we will discuss about the microeconomics and the macroeconomics okay here the microeconomics studies the economic actions and behavior of individual units of individuals and small groups okay microeconomics also examine whether the resources are efficiently whether the resources are effectively allocated to individual consumers and producers in the economy this is related to the study of 
welfare economics okay here the scope of macroeconomics is concerned with product pricing factor pricing and theory of economics welfare okay then the macroeconomics deal with the general price levels and its fluctuations over a time instead of dealing with the relative prices of goods and relative services okay here the meaning of fluctuations means irregular rises and falling in numbers okay after this it studies like national income total consumption total saving and employment the theory of economic growth is the another important area of study in macroeconomics okay don't be confused in macroeconomics and microeconomics okay here the most of the modern economics is concerned with economic growth particularly of development of countries those main objectives is to achieve high rate of economic growth and development also the scope of microeconomics is concerned with the theories of income employment general price level inflation economic growth and micro theory of distribution okay after that the science lay down certain principles while art puts them into a particular use then the economics is also a science because it has theories laws which established a relation between causes and effects okay it laws possess universally validity and these are self corrective okay here the economic laws are practically application in solving economic problems this the economic is a both science and an art okay whereas economics not only the explains things as they are in positive science but also in elucidates with what it ought to be in normative science for example economics discusses the existing level of wages prices and tax rates okay in the economy and also suggest how they ought to be economics is both positive and normative science here the meaning of elucidates means making something clear and explain in detail okay now come to the meaning of normative means the norms standard especially towards a behavior okay here the macroeconomics and the microeconomics is that traditionally the subject matter of economics has been divided into five groups that is consumption production exchange distribution and public finance that is come under the traditional okay traditional branches of economy whereas in modern economic theory they have divided into two branches that is macroeconomics and microeconomics okay here the university of oslo first used these two terms to explain the study of economics in year 1933 okay now we will discuss in detail about the macroeconomics and as well as the microeconomics okay first we will go with the term macroeconomics the term macro is derived from greek word that is macros its meaning is small okay macroeconomics is that branch of economics which studies an economy or decision making unit and considered in detail the behavior of the particular unit so it studies the economics action and behavior of an individual units see listen carefully okay and behavior of individual units and small groups of individual units here microeconomics is also known as partial analysis okay according to bolling the microeconomics is the study of particular firms particular households individual prices wages income individual industries and particular commodities okay here the chapreu says that microeconomics has got relation with the study of small segments of 
society. Okay. After the definition of microeconomics and the views and the explanation, we will see the scope of microeconomics. Okay. Here the person that is economist named as Marshall popularized that microeconomics is based on assumptions of full employment and marginal analysis. Okay. The three major fields covered by microeconomics are theory of product pricing, theory of factor pricing and theory of welfare. It studies how the price of various goods and services are determined okay, and what quantities of different factors of production should be minimized to cost of production. Okay. Here the microeconomics is also called as price theory okay, because it explains the prices in product market and as well as in factor markets okay it also examine whether the resources are efficiently allocated to the individual consumers and producers is an economy and it is also related to the welfare of economics okay in scope of microeconomics first it goes to product pricing under product pricing that is theory of demand and theory of production and costs then after next under the scope of microeconomics is that the factor pricing under factor pricing theory of distribution is there under theory of distribution these are the factors that is rent wages interest and profit after this too the theory of economic welfare is also come under the scope of microeconomics okay after this we will discuss about the importance of microeconomics after the scope of microeconomics the importance of microeconomics we will discuss the microeconomics explain how a free market economy work to decide about the allocation of productive resources among many producers to produce goods and as well as services also okay and this analysis is useful to the government to frame suitable policies for the efficient use of scarce resources and to promote economic efficiencies okay for achieving economic growth and stability of course after that in microorganisms can be used to examine the conditions of economic welfare and it suggests the required change to bring the maximum social welfare okay the microeconomics also analyzes the applicable in the field of international trade and in the determination of exchange rates okay the microeconomics is used to explain the factors which determine the distribution of the incident or to burden of a commodity tax between the producers and the consumers okay after that Moreover, it despite the facts that the models of the microeconomics theory are only crude approximate to the real world. So, there is a value of studying analytical techniques of microeconomics. So, till here we have discussed about the microeconomics, how it is scopeful and how it is importance for the development and for the welfare of individual and as well as the welfare of the peoples also. Okay.